overseas now. Vaccinations have already begun. The Russian government says people in Moscow started receiving its version of a coronavirus vaccine and the UK plans to begin its first vaccinations this week. ABC's Julia McFarlane has more from London. Julia, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. We have new details in from the British government detailing this mammoth task ahead, the biggest mass vaccination program in British history. The drug made by Pfizer and BioNTech arrived on UK soil earlier this week, transported on freezer trucks from the production facility in Belgium. Those vaccines that all of us have been waiting for are now in boxes at a number of secure locations across the UK. And over the next few days, they're going to undergo a series of checks before being distributed. First, they'll be administered from large hospitals that will already have that specialist equipment they need for sub-sub-zero temperatures and storage before they are defrosted and readied for administering. The army is drafting in volunteers and the National Health Service and health charities are reportedly hiring tens of thousands of extra staff to help with this rollout. Many of them will be allocated to mass vaccination centres that are being set up in unused stadiums, conference centres and even a race course in Epsom. Now, the first among those to receive the vaccine starting Tuesday will be health workers, care home workers and the elderly. Eva? Julia McFarland for us there in London. Joining us now is Dr. Ashish Jha, Dean of the Brown University School of Public Health. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Vaccines obviously top of minds for so many as we inch closer to those first doses going out here in the U.S. This week, the FDA will hold a public meeting to discuss approving the emergency use of Pfizer's vaccine. What can we expect from that meeting? Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me on. What I am expecting this week is we're going to have a thorough vetting of the data. We're going to see a lot of new data that hasn't been released yet. And then I do expect by the end of the day, Thursday, uh, to get an authorization from the FDA. It might be Friday morning. Uh, you know, obviously the timing is not going to be perfectly predictable, but I do expect that this week we're going to see the Pfizer vaccine get authorized for use in the United States. So perhaps the biggest hurdle with this vaccine is that of public opinion of it. What do you say to those who worry we don't know the long term effects of this vaccine? Yeah, look, I'm, I totally understand where people are coming from. The, the thing that I say to folks is that every vaccine goes through a series of safety steps. This vaccine, these vaccines have gone through every single step. They have now been tested in tens of thousands of people uh, across the U.S. and hundreds of thousands of people around the world, if you put all these vaccines together. And we're not seeing much in the way of severe events. So I feel pretty confident, but we do have to look at the full set of data that will become available later this week. There's also some hesitation about kids taking this vaccine. You've said you wouldn't give your own children the vaccine right away. Why is that? Yeah, look, I expect my kids to get vaccinated. The issue simply is that uh, we haven't tested it in kids or not enough. So I expect those data to be coming out in the next couple of weeks. I'm sorry, next week, next couple of months. And then once that becomes available, uh, we'll look at that data. And I do expect children to get vaccinated. Uh, let's turn to testing now, because for the first time, the FDA has authorized an at-home test that will detect for both coronavirus and the flu. What do we know about how well this test will work? Yeah, it's a uh, what's called a PCR test. It's the same testing technology that we use for uh, we've been using for COVID really since March. Uh, it's a high quality test. Uh, for me, the problem is uh, not so much that whether well, it's a good test. I think it is. The problem is it's not going to be widely available. You'll need a prescription to get it. Uh, it will take a while before these tests become uh, widely available. And given that we've had this technology for so many months, I wish we had these tests earlier. But you know, we don't have enough of them right now. And, and more and more places are beginning to order stay at home orders. We haven't yet seen the spike from Thanksgiving travel yet. So what does that still mean for us as far as what's ahead? Yeah, we're going to have a hard December. You know, we're starting to see the cases rise from Thanksgiving, but the hospitalizations and deaths that will surely follow are still a couple of weeks away and hospitals are getting full. So uh, I think it's good for states to be reacting. I have Largely not been a huge fan of stay at home orders. I'd like to see more targeted efforts. But in some states, things have gotten so bad that I understand that's what policymakers are doing. A lot of decisions for people to have to make in the coming weeks. Dr. Ajish Jha, thank you so much for being with us this morning.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.